Hello and welcome to another video for Marchintosh. Um, if you're not sure what Marchintosh is, there will be a card about um, just where I explain everything. But anyway, for this video, we will be doing something very uh, special. And that will be a dual boot between Mac OS 8.1 and 7.6.1. And we have a friend um, joining us today. But uh, while this is booting, I might as well give you a just a little, just some reasoning for why I want to. Oh, injected that. But um, anyway, I'll just give you some reasoning for why I want to. Um, you know, dual boot. And, and I think, um, okay, so the reason why I installed macOS 8.1 over macOS 7.6.1 in the first place is that macOS 8.1 supports HFS+. Plus. Now, if I were thinking, I would have realized that, um, honestly, HFS+, Plus doesn't matter all that much, um, Although it is nice to have the ability, like this would make a great bridge machine, for instance, if I needed, if there was like a floppy or something formatted in HFS Plus and I wanted to um, copy the files over to a machine running 7.6 or something, you know, maybe a, you know, a 68 of 30 or 68 of 20 Mac where it can't run um, uh, OS 8, but it can run System 7, something like that. Um, but after installing 8.1, I found that it is rather slow and unstable. Um, it's not bad by any means, it's it's still perfectly usable, but it's not as stable as I would like, especially when, in regards to the internet, um, like, for instance, I've had multiple times where having the wireless card in has f made the computer freeze on startup, um, and, yeah, just some weird issues like that. Also, opening web browsers can be a bit iffy. So essentially what I want to do is... Um, essentially what I want to do is dual boot, so I have the utility of 8.1, but the usability of 7.6.1, because I've heard 7.6.1 is, in general, more stable than 8.1. So there are a few things that I will do first, because, um, you know, 7.6.1 and 8.1 have a relatively similar default file structure, and um, I don't want to mess that up by having a by having 761 try and overwrite 81 so i am actually going to just rename every every uh folder that was initially um installed with macOS 8.1 i'm going to rename every folder to that folder name plus 8.1 just so I don't get any um, conflicts and then once I install 761 I will do the same with 761 8.1 and I'll probably come up with some better um, naming scheme eventually but this is good for now but so I have applications 8.1, internet 8.1 Readme files 8.1, assistance 8.1. Now the main issue is that I lose the custom icons, but I can do without that. Stationary is for open doc. It is empty. Well, it has readmes, but it's largely empty, so that is fine. Web pages is also not something I'm worried about. Utilities is something I'll want to. Um, For utilities, here's what I'll do. Uh, well, I'll, I'll merge. I'll probably actually merge most of these, just so I have 
everything all in one place, but for now, um, this is going to be good. And I'm breaking, I'm probably breaking a bunch of aliases by doing this, but I, um, have a cool program that I will show later. So, anyway, um, I haven't renamed the system folder yet, because I will do that from the, um, floppy. Which is now booting from. And this is a Disk Tools 761 floppy, actually. So that, um, or Disk Tools 76, I think. Um, but anyway, the reason why is because it will, it doesn't like, um, installing from anything newer than any system software version newer than the version it's trying to install. So while I, so I couldn't really use my Disk Tools 81 floppy to install it. And then, if you're wondering, like the original, um, like the original, uh, time I installed 8.1 on here, I have the ISO on the Compact Splash card, which I will insert once so this is finished booting. Oh yeah, I need to rename those um, to drop stuff and stuff to expand or A1. But anyway, um, excuse the creak from my chair. So first, let me rename these. One fun thing about running off of floppy is that it has to access. It has to access the disk for most things, but it's not too big a deal. This is actually my first computer that I had with um with an internal floppy drive, um, not counting my um not counting a dual Z on board, which I will do a video on eventually once I can get power supply for it. But um, that's another story. The reason why I say that that has a um, built-in floppy drive is because it has built it has a floppy header on it. It doesn't have an actual like floppy drive on the board, but it has a floppy header. Okay, system folder eight point one. There we go. Now for the um, now I do need to fix the um. Oh, it's under utilities, but I, I now I need to fix the um, aliases because that didn't work. Because the um, aliases for most things are likely broken now. I forget if this version of macOS is smart enough or not to you know like update aliases automatically. But I'm just gonna go with it is not because that is the safe way to go. Alias Crony. Now this is a really useful program to have. Um, let's see. Interesting. Um, let's see.
I'll uh, tell you what I'm going to do. I'm going to restart and then try running it from the... Um, I'm going to restart and try running it from the um, Compact Flash card, which is what I have booting this machine. Anyway, um, I guess I'll be back when that finishes. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay, so I'm actually looking here, and I'm just... Yeah, it, it's actually, um, uh, none of the aliases broke, so that is awesome. Uh, so, I guess I'll restart again and start the installation. I do have to say, I love the, um, uh, I love this floppy drive. <laughs> just, like, I'm not sure what it is about it, but, um, just everything from how it sounds when I'm, you know, actually, like, using a disc to how it ejects the disc is just amazing. Supposedly earlier Apple drives, um, I haven't ever seen this in person, but supposedly earlier Apple drives, if I'm remembering correctly, actually have auto-inject as well, not just auto-eject, which is really cool, um, because, you know, like, just, yeah, just imagine if, um, the slot-loading super drives for optical discs that Apple has now had that feature, auto-inject. And, um, my iBook, which is just sitting, like, you know, it's sitting on the floor in front of the desk, um, that actually, um, uh, actually, I'll bring it up really quickly. There's no cover on the combo drive, which means that it is actually, there's nothing to dampen the force of the combo drive itself. Which means that it actually will like fling discs across the desk when it ejects them. Which I just find really amusing. Okay. So we are back in. So. Let's see here. I guess first I'll want to create a um, backup of the um, first I'll want to create the backup a backup of the drive in case anything goes wrong. That's an old backup that I made. Just go ahead and empty the trash. Agree. Let's see. Create image from disk. That's the source disk. And uh, let me zoom you in a little for this part. Let's 
see. I'd rather not compress it. <laughs> Just because, um, that takes a little while. I don't want to mount the image. But I do want to put on this. Save. So now I guess I'll um, come back when this is done. I'm not sure how long this will take, but you know, it'll probably it'll probably take a bit. Okay, so that is complete. Um, so I can just quit out of that now, and here we have a new image on the drive. And now I will open up the virtual CD DVD ROM utility, mount an image, and the image I mount is located in the system 7 folder. Ignore the hidden files please. And um, let's see, there we go. Install Mac OS. Oh. Right. You're here. <laughs> um, what is it? You want to do this video. I mean, I guess you can. This is my channel and all, but I guess you can do it just this once. Do you even, do you even know what Mac OS 7.6 is? Okay, very well then. Um, our friend here wants to do the video. Um, so yeah, she will guide you through installing Mac OS 7.6. Oh, one thing just occurred to me. You can't talk, can you? You want me to be your ears and mouth, I mean. Yeah, you want me to be your mouth. Um, very well, then. So, she also can't use the mouse. <laughs> she told me that after. Um, anyway. So, yeah, she is going to guide us through installing macOS 7.6. Don't need to read, don't need to do that. But I do need to choose the disk. And that is the disk we want. So now I will install the software. Okay. I have to say, this is what I love about Mac OS 7.6. I don't really think we need an open dock. What do you think? Okay. She said she didn't want to. So yeah, I'll probably speed this up in post because it might take a while. <laughs> um, so yeah. Oh, um, there we go. Let's see.
Okay, so um, this is finished installing, and now uh, she's going to need to customize it how she likes. But yeah. No, I'm actually impressed. You're doing a great job with this. Hopefully you won't replace me, though, because this is my channel. Please remember that. Well, um, she has finished, um, setting up the computer the way she liked, or, well, I finished setting it up for her, and, by the way, in the future, please don't pull my hair when I do something you don't agree with. I guess you can't talk, can you? Okay, fine, pulling my hair. <laughs> anyway, um... So, yeah. This is... basically, um... complete. I was gonna demonstrate the Macintosh Garden IRC bridge again, just because, you know, different operating system, but it is giving me an error. But so yeah, let's pull up the system profiler. So, um... Yeah. This is a PowerBook 1400, which is identified by the model ID of 310. It's running 761, PowerPC 603E, 16 megabytes of um, physical memory, and yeah. As you can see, I have two system folders on here. And I did get networking um, to be a thing. So, um, yeah, and I just have to say this feels a lot snappier and a lot um, more stable than Mac OS 8.1. I'm really happy with how this turned out. So, um... Yeah, let's just go to my website. And here we are. I'm actually going to redesign the site soon. But yeah, um... Yeah, I'm I'm really happy with how this turned out. And this can play music. Um <laughs> uh As you've heard before, the speakers aren't like, you know, the best, but they're speakers. Um Yeah, that'll be good. I'm not sure if you can hear that at all.
So yeah, um, I I hope you enjoyed this video. Um, I had a lot of fun setting this up, and I learned a lot about just this. I learned a lot more than I already knew. I and yeah. So this open actually opens up a lot of um really cool projects that I can do for the future. Uh, so yeah. I hope you have a good evening, and I hope you enjoyed this video, and I'll see you next time.